Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and I didn't have a video last Thursday because I wasn't in the mood. <laughs> so I didn't. In fact, I did mostly nothing all week except go to the range and shoot my pistol and practice and have a good time. And then I come home and I watched all of your videos. <laughs> Alright, so I got a couple of new toys to play with. One of them is a proximity sensor. And I knew so little about them before I ordered one that uh, I didn't know there was more than one kind. Or I might would have tried harder to order two kinds or two of them maybe. But anyway, we're going to look at what I got. And then I was watching a, a channel by a young uh, engineer guy called Stuff Made Here. And he's got this basketball backboard that fix it where you can't miss the basket. You throw it up there any old way in it, it'll arrange the backboard so that you can't miss the basket. Or you can turn it around the opposite and it won't let you hit the basket at all. So, but that's not what this is about. That's something else. Uh, anyway, he made a uh, breakaway torch mount for his plasma table. And I downloaded his files and 3D printed the most of it. I had to get uh, a little help with a part of it. But uh, anyway, we've got that and we're going to put it all together. We're not going to test the torch. I'm going to save that for later. You guys have seen enough torches running around blowing sparks everywhere anyway. So uh, I will let you know how it comes out. I, I don't really believe it's going to work out because my torch height control is too erratic and I think it's just going to dive down and hit the metal and disconnect the torch it's going to pop off <laughs> you know but we'll see you know we, there's always a possibility of things working out good let's get on with it well what we've got here is another old man toy and it's a proximity sensor and we've all heard of them and and seen them used on uh, various machinery and stuff but I've never laid eyes on one in person before or used one well I may have been around them in person and not noticed or something but anyway what we've got here is a proximity sensor and I don't claim to know anything about this I had to go and watch a video to learn something about them and uh, one of the first things I learned was that they normally have a a brown and a black and a blue wire coming out of them like on this piece of paper here and let's see if you can see that I guess you can this is my gun cleaning table alright so anyway the, the brown wire is the positive the blue wire is the negative and the black wire is uh, I guess you could call it a signal wire or whatever and I believe this is the diagram they've got drawn on it. And I think that means you should go through a resistor, you know, to get the connection back to positive. Because that's, that's, the, that's where your indication flow is going to go through. Your indicating voltage is going to go between the black and the brown. Now i got this meter here. And it's showing 0.345 volts, which is just leakage through this thing. It's not the the real signal but if I get now I had a magnet my setup here is with my little power supply and I'm using it to provide 12 volt power to this uh, little uh, proximity sensor I've got the negative on the blue wire and the positive on the brown wire that are coming from the power supply and then my my fluke is on the positive wire and the black wire in the middle just in case you were wondering what the wiring arrangement is there. Now this thing came with a little disc magnet to use to pick up the, the signal and uh, in a couple of minutes I've been sitting here I've managed to lose it already so <laughs> but I've got another magnet so what we'll do is I will show you what happens when you get near to this thing. He's got a little indicator light on the back when you start getting near that light turns on to tell you there's some activity. See that? Okay. Now, not only does that happen, but we'll look on the meter here, and we'll see that there's, there it, I think, 
got to hold this some way. When this proximity sensor gets close to this magnet, you see a 12 volt signal on the uh, multimeter. Move it away, move it up close. I think my wires will come loose. Since I've been messing with the uh, CNC plasma torch, I I started wondering what should I use to to see how close I am to you know to a, a stop or something. So maybe the limits of the table. And I thought about proximity sensors, but I didn't know anything about them, so I went with the switches. But apparently these proximity switch sensors come kind of like transistors in, in a PNP configuration or an NPN. And I think the PNP ones are, are capacitive and they will react to everything, water, fingers, screwdrivers, whatever, you know. This guy, he doesn't re react to anything but that magnet. Whoa. That's the only thing that's going to get his attention is this magnet. And you've got to have, there, you've got to have the right polarity towards it on top of it all. And I think you can see that it's seeing the magnet. So, I'm going to play with these things a little bit just to see what I can see and learn what I can learn. They're a lot more expensive than the little switches I use. This thing's about $12. The little switches are about a buck and a half or a dollar. So, you know, there's a big difference there in, in the cost. Often uh, you hear the big boys with the big channels and the really big nice shops talking about they've got a dirty room where they do their welding and grinding and a clean room for their other machinery and such. And uh, I can tell you there's a good reason for that. You see this pile of magnets you see this black stuff on there that's metal particles from the uh, plasma torch my CNC plasma torch I didn't have uh, a water bath for it or a water bed whatever you want to call it and so these little particles have floated through the air all over the garage and they're trapped here on these magnets you know as a absolute fact uh, for you to see which gets down to the subject of the the plasma torch in itself I was um, <coughs> excuse me watching this guy um, he's a young engineer and he's got a channel called uh, stuff made here and he made a CNC plasma machine table torch whatever and he bought one of these particular little linear actuators to, to lift his torch up and down and then he uh, made it, his torch work would break away uh, in the event that it ran into something. Now here recently I changed my torch to have a spring loaded so it would push up about an inch for it if, uh, if it ran into an obstruction. So that's another way of solving the problem. But I got curious. I want to know which way is the best way to go. So I bought one of these. It's about $65 on, uh, I think, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. And uh, it's got a ball screw and everything. You know, it's really going to be super accurate, which is, I don't know <laughs> all that necessary with my plasma torch because my height control runs it up and down about half crazy most of the time. But anyway, the way he did it was he made uh, 3D printed a, a piece to go on there. And then there will be magnets in the uh, corners of it. And he 3D printed this piece is going to hold the torch and it's going to be sitting on there. And the magnets are going to hold it together. And this little piece is going to hold the uh, torch on there. Uh, I guess you can see there's two different colors here. I printed this stuff and uh, Bruno Martini, the guy with the engineered 3D channel, printed this part for me. I imagine this is ABS and my stuff's PLA, but even though his, his piece may be tougher than mine, I couldn't get that darn thing to print. I tried printing this about four times and never got any kind of success with it. 
I don't know why that piece gave me a hard time, but anyway, he's he's an expert in the 3D printing, and he uh, he got it done for me. So now I've got these magnets. They finally came in. I didn't have to do much. That one went in quick and easy. I was going to take them over to the arbor press and push them in. That one went in really good. Let's see if this one will. Yeah, he went in pretty good too. I got a feeling that burn it. I got a feeling that uh, just putting a little super glue around the edge of it will keep it in there pretty good. That one went in really nice. It just popped in. So there was this song about have you ever seen the rain? Something or another. I don't even know exactly what the guy was singing about. I I seldom ever understand the lyrics of songs. <clears throat> but anyway, I was wrong. <laughs> this switch actually will fit it's bigger here so it doesn't come out I just gotta pry the stupid thing down in there is all so hey take a nap while I'm over here breaking my thumb trying to shove this thing in the slot somehow I got off on that song there didn't I and, well have you ever made a mistake was what I was thinking about I don't know if I explained that or not. I'll see if when I play the video back for editing. But that's what the switch looks like when it's on there. I've got it hooked to my flute, which is showing uh, open loop. Let's see if I can set it where you can see it. I'm all right. Let's see. Yeah, I've, obviously, I've got it on hooked up the wrong way. But anyway, when that pops off. I assume some of you that hear better than me can hear that thing buzzing away. It wasn't supposed to show open loop there. Anyway, it's going to be open loop whenever the, the torch comes off. I don't know why that is right now, but I'll play with it. So, since I changed out the old motor that was on the z-axis for a new one we're going to have to retune the new one and there's a formula for that you take the old setting times the distance you want to move divided by the actual distance moved and that gives you the new setting okay so the old setting is in the configuration we have to disable the thing to go to configure I didn't touch the right thing. All right. Configure, control, motors, motor two. Let's start with motor zero, one, two, like that. I don't know why I hit that right here. Motor two. All right, the old setting on it is over there. Let's see if we can zoom in on it just a little bit. The old setting is 2574 at 1931. So I will do math on that with uh, a little calculator here. So we've got uh, 2574, 2574. 1931-1931 times one inch. So that of course is our answer there. And then we want to divide that by the actual distance. So we go ahead and divide by um, 1.2 inches. And that will equal the new tuning is 2145. One six zero nine. I don't use all the digits, although I probably should, but I don't. I'm that kind of guy, and I'm going to put the new numbers in the configuration here. Two one four five. Two one four five point one six zero nine one six 
0.09 and we will apply that and we'll tell this guy okay he can go away for now I'm going to enable the guy I've got, I've got G code in there for, to make the Z axis go up one inch and pause five seconds and then go back down one inch so I'll move you around and let's, let's see what that setting yields for us. Alright, so we'll start it and see how far it goes. Okay, it's all set. We'll start it and see where it goes. Well, 10 inches and 59,000, it only improved a thousand. So, back to the old drawing board, do another calculation. I'll wake you guys up when I get right up there at the tuning. Well, I got pretty lucky. I only had to calculate that about six times. And I'm within a thousandth of an inch. And considering it is the Z axis of a torch, I think a thousandth of an inch would do me good, so let's just go ahead and let me show you the movement through one inch. Alright, there we are, we're like one thousandth short of an inch. Not bad, I think. I was lucky, only six calculations. So, on with the rest of the playing with the machine. Well, they was having this trial in uh, Bubba's hometown there. His, his grandma, Grandma Smith, you know, was one of the witnesses. And she got up on the stand and the prosecutor and lawyer come along and he says, uh, well, he says, Grandma Smith, he says, do you know who I am? She says, yeah, I sure do, Billy. She says, and you're a big disappointment. She says, I've known you your whole life, and you're a big disappointment to me. She says, you lie and cheat and steal, and, and you're just no good all the way around. She says, you think you're a big shot, you know, and you talk about people behind their back and all kind of stuff. She says, yeah, yeah, I know who you are. Well, he was kind of stunned there, you know, and <laughs> kind of decided to stop his questioner right there on the spot. And he says, well, I... I Pass you on over to, I have no more questions, uh, passing you on to the uh, defense attorney. So the defense attorney got up there and feeling kind of smug. And he said, well, Grandma Smith, he says, do you know who I am? She says, yeah, Bobby. She says, I know you. I've known you since you was a little boy. She says, you you cheat on all your wives. You, you know, you've been married to you and married several times. He says, you always cheat on your wives. She says, you're a drunk. You got the worst uh, legal practice in town. She says, I don't know how you even keep a, your, your door open. She says, yeah, I know you. And boy, he was stunned. Well, he said, I got no more further questions, you know. And so the judge calls both the lawyers up there to, to, you know, to his bench, you know. And he says, look here, guys. He says, I'm going to tell you guys one thing. He says, if either one of you ask her she knows me, I'm going to throw you in jail for contempt of court. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.